Hello, everyone. It's Reverend Dr. Katie, and finally, the Facebook Live about contrast. I've been promising you this for a week, and then I was out of town with kind of unsteady internet, and then I was sick, uh, so I had my own little contrast to deal with, so I can even give you some real-life examples from my own experience of contrast of having a cold and just feeling kind of uh, under the weather the past few days. Uh, all these contrasts always have some kind of lesson to offer us, and yeah, so here we are. I am really, really uh, happy to be talking about this because I just run into people every day because we're human and we have human experiences who experience contrast. We all experience contrast. Okay, so let's start out with what is contrast. Contrast is when something does not go the way that we want it to and we feel really bad about this. This can be as minor as stubbing our toe on the door frame or getting a cold like I had over the weekend or as big as disrupted relationships or a divorce or um, you know something cataclysmic or you know the problems in your community even uh, we all experience contrast at some level and when you think about it if we didn't experience contrast we would never grow this is biblical we see this in the like beginning of Genesis, uh, the first human beings experience contrast, they experience hurt, they experience what it means to be out of sorts and out of relationships so that they know what it is to be in relationship and to be um, moving forward in a good way in their lives. So I asked many of you about a week ago, what is it that stands in your way of having exactly what you desire out of life? So here is a big tip. What you desire when you have that in resonance as a Christian with God's desires, with um, Christ's light in your life, you are co-creating with God the very life that you desire. And when we do that, when it's in resonance, when we do that with the kind of spirit of thy will be done, which is what I teach people, then we are actively working towards creating the life of we want that we want and the life that will have the biggest impact, the life where we can live out our vocation, where we can live out our mission in the biggest ways possible. And uh, this is the, the dream. This is what we're here for. We're not here to live a life of only contrast. We are here to experience some contrast so that we can go on and live exactly uh, the life that we dream of, that God dreams of for us too. So let me ask you a question, which is really, really deep down, deep down in your soul, deep down in your heart. Do you believe that God desires the best life for you and that God wants you to enjoy that life and live that life full heartedly. If the answer is no, then you're having some contrast within you and we need to root out what that contrast is. If the answer is yes, then the only question left is, are you doing it? And if the answer to that is no, then, uh, then, the, then the question we need to ask is, why not? Why not? And by asking all those kind of questions, we can really get to the root of the answer. We can get to the root of what is the contrast that you are hanging on to that is keeping you from living exactly what you wanna live and creating exactly what you want to create in this life. So some of the answers are really good answers and they're all real realities for you that, um, that you all kind of told me was um, money, fear of not being good enough, fear of hurting someone, and that's a really, really big one. Um, fear of failure, fear of setting boundaries, um, fear of really trusting your inner voice, of trusting that intuition, of trusting what I call that God compass that resides inside of you. And then fear of your family reaction too. Those are all really big ones. I kind of got to artificially categorize these into resources, internal fears, fear of failure, fear of setting boundaries, and then relationship, fear of what other people, how other people might react or how you explain yourself or something along those lines. Contrast is another, is a word for what I call self-limiting beliefs. So at some level, we often put a self-limiting belief on ourselves. The self-limiting belief is I'll never have enough money to do the things I wanna do in life. If that's the message that we tell ourselves, guess what? We'll never have enough money to do the things that we wanna do. Or my family will never understand that I have a gift of healing. If that's what we tell ourselves, my family will never understand, then guess what? They never ever will. One of the things that I help people do is reframe those self-limiting beliefs to identify them 
and then to break through them. They actually don't have to define you. If you feel like that self-limiting belief or that moment of contrast is the only thing that's present in your life, that's actually a mindset issue. That's not a God mindset issue. That's a human mindset issue. I kind of wonder sometimes if when Jesus was preparing for his ministry, if maybe he ever turned to Mary and was like, I do not feel like walking all over Galilee and Israel. Like, I just can't do it. My shoes aren't good enough. And if Mary was like, come on, you can always get new shoes. Like you can do this, right? Like a mindset issue. I don't, probably Jesus didn't say that, but just as an example. Um, And we're really called to have that same kind of faithfulness. And so we have all of these kind of years, decades sometimes of contrast, of self-limiting beliefs built inside of us. And we have to learn to shed those. And when we do, my gosh, it's this ultimate freedom. It's this ultimate freedom to be able to um, live and cherish and and create and co-create exactly our desires. And when we do that in resonance with God, then absolutely nothing can stop us. And I am giving you this particular message on the full moon because tonight is a beautiful night to start to live into those dreams, to start to release those to the universe. So how does it feel when a self-limiting belief defines you, a self-limiting belief about money or about family or about failure or about boundaries? And uh, I have some good news for you. Everyone fails. It's how you deal with the failure. Everyone is going to fail fail at some point in time. And when that failure turns into a learning experience, poof, the self-limiting belief disappears. Everyone is going to have boundaries that get eroded sometimes. Guess what? When they do, we say, ah, learning experience. You know, next time I know how to do that and do that with love, poof, self-limiting belief disappears. So you see the mindset issue that I'm talking about. All of these can be dealt with and um, we can kind of poke through the origins of them to be able to release them forever. When I hang on to a self-limiting belief, I'm going to tell you how it makes me feel. I feel anxious and my heart races and my stomach clenches and I get into a mindset loop of I'll never or what I can't do. And then it keeps me from getting into the mindset of what I can do. Fortunately, now in my life, I have some techniques to be able to recognize that, to break through it, to let that flow through me and not become the defining factor of my day, of my hour, of my second. So you can actually learn to transmute all of these thoughts in a matter of seconds and get rid of them, get them out of your energy field. And as Christians, I believe that that's what we're called to do. Every time I do that, I am living more fully into my mission, not perfectly, but I am living more fully into it. And then I'm inviting others to do that too. And that is also your calling. We are all called to raise the vibration to um, learn from our contrast, to not let them define us, and then to move on into our new realities. So this weekend, I was sick. I started getting sick on Friday um, around noon. Part of part of my learning experiences all the time are I'll wake up and I think, huh, is it allergies? Huh, my energy's down. What is it? And it doesn't occur to me for like six to eight hours that, oh, actually, it's because I'm getting sick. This weekend, I absolutely needed to lay down, to reflect, to have some processing time. And as soon as I did that under this contrast of being sick, then all this stuff just kind of came into my awareness. I I got out my journal. I started writing. I had all these amazing things that were coming to me that my busyness, and believe me, I am uh, have a self-limiting belief that I need to be busy all the time. I'm always working on that one. As soon as I got rid of that, um, that was I was forced to get rid of through this ill through this minor illness that I had. Then I was able to allow all of this God's spirit to come into me, and I was able to reflect. I was able to have some really deep meditations with Scripture. It was just beautiful. Um, I didn't feel good while I was doing that, but I was able to have that. So I was able to determine in part what the contrast, why I was experiencing this particular contrast, and integrate that, and then by today, I actually feel a lot better. So um, so that is really, really good news. And experience of this minor contrast, you know, of being sick, which I was, um, but how I reframe that in my own life. All right, so we have a couple of questions coming in. So let me read those. Um, yeah, so one of the issues I have is letting the thoughts about self-limiting beliefs turn around in your head for too long before you capture and take hold of them. It just takes practice. It, it, it sounds like you're able to... 
um, get a hold of them eventually. And so that process just gets faster and faster. Yeah, and you can you can absolutely do it in seconds instead of days or hours. It takes a little practice. You know, like I said, with my illnesses, it, it usually takes me six to eight hours, and I'm working with my soul to get that down to a little bit quicker because. I would have preferred not to have been sick all weekend, but just for a few hours <laughs> or not at all if I could have helped it. Yeah, so that's, I, I love that though. So, but it sounds like you're on the right track. You are able to recognize it and you're started that process. So yeah, if you want to speed that up, go ahead and reach out to me um, on via PM and we can, we can definitely talk about that and set something up for you. What I do want to invite everyone to do is, um, if you have watched this far and this has resonated with you, um, I'm having a training and it's tomorrow uh, it's tomorrow on June 18th. Uh, if you're watching this after June 18th, don't worry, you can still watch the replay. Just reach out to me. I'll set you up. And we're having a training about discovering your metaphysical gifts and like step two in discovering your metaphysical gifts is working with your self-limiting beliefs. If you have a self-limiting belief that you can't do it because of time, because of money, because of family opinion, because of all of these other things, then guess what? You're going to still be here in a year, two years, five years, wondering the same thing. Instead, let's break through those self-limiting beliefs, see where they're residing inside of you so that you can begin to shift that energy. And, and so I can help you do that. Uh, it's one of the things I love to help people do. I loved having it done for me uh, when I've had mentors who helped me do that. And in turn, I like helping other people do that too. Um, so it really is like a, a basic step to do. And then you learn to transmute that faster and faster and faster. So yeah, that's definitely possible for the for the question asker. Really great question. Thank you for bringing that in. Um, I, there were a few others. So let me, I'm going to jump to my uh, other page to see what else was going on. Give me one second. I thought I captured them all, but I'm remembering in the back of my head, I said to someone, I'm going to answer that for you. So give me one minute. Okay, so there's one about boundaries. I will address that in just a moment. Let me look at the others real quick. Okay, and then about change. Okay, so let's do, let's do those two. We'll do boundaries and change. Okay, so with the boundaries, um, there's sometimes a self-limiting belief that will hold or a contrast that will hold that, um, bound, that boundaries are... Hmm, that if we're Christians, we can't have really good and strong boundaries because that will be hurtful to someone else. Whereas I think a, um, a, a more complete spiritual model and a more complete biblical model is that good boundaries actually hold relationship much better. They're a better container than ones where we have no boundaries at all. But the thing is, we can only set boundaries for ourselves, whether they're energetic boundaries, personal boundaries, whether they are... Um, spiritual boundaries, we can only set those for ourselves. And we can do that energetically, we can do it interpersonally, we can do it, um, you know, uh, fiercely, which we need to do. And we can't do them for others, right? We can only do them for ourselves. And breaking, we don't, we always want to honor other people's boundaries, um, and hold those with kind of tenderness and with gentleness. And so the question asker about that, um, I know this was a particular situation, so you might want to private message me about that and just so we can converse a little bit about that because I don't want to speak too broadly or too specifically about a situation where I'm not that well informed. Um, but the belief that boundaries are so porous or so rigid that they're going to impede us in our spiritual journey is a self-limiting belief that we can start to work through. The other one about change, that we don't live into our full selves because fear of change, whether that change is positive or negative. Yeah, so this is fear of the unknown, and it can be a really powerful, motivating way to keep us the same. So let me ask you a question. Um, do you want to be in exactly the same place where you are now in six months, in a year, in a decade? If the answer to that is no, then, um, then change is inevitable. But here's the actual news. Change is inevitable anyway. 
It's inevitable anyway. Uh, things will not stay the same, and that is completely beyond your control. So my wisdom in this matter is to work with the law of attraction to attract the change that you desire in your life. And that way you are a co-pilot in the process of change and you are directing that. But even more than that, you are receiving all the good change that is designed to come to you. And you learn how to ride those waves with some grace and with some smoothness. And like I, like we said earlier, failure is also inevitable. And actually that's good. That is not a bad thing. That is an okay thing. If you look at the life of Jesus, we could look at the life of Jesus and many people did as Christians were first spreading on the earth. They would say, you worship a crucified God? This makes no sense. When you look at the life of Jesus um, ending, his earthly life ending in crucifixion, is that a failed life? That's how many people saw it. But of course, of Christians, we know that resurrection is around the corner. We know that that is not the end of the story. Same with any failure that we have. A failure is simply a learning opportunity, and then we get up and we resurrect. Uh, we, we are Christians. We believe in the power of resurrection, a transformation, a forgiveness. We forgive ourselves, we forgive others, and we move on. So my wisdom in this particular um, really hard one, because a lot of people do not like change, is to learn to ride the waves of change with some grace, with some positivity, without self-limiting beliefs making us cling on even more and more and more, so that we're always co-piloting that change with God in our lives. So we always have um, we know that we have this co-pilot and that we're doing that together. And once we learn how to work with those energies, then it becomes a joyous little roller coaster ride and not one where we have to have fear rule us. Yeah, so come to the training tomorrow. Actually, that will be, it'll be really, really helpful. Even if you can't make it live, which I hope you do, because it's much more fun if you're live. But if you can't make it live, go ahead and register anyway so you have access to everything that is coming as a result uh, a result of that training. It's going to be really fun. I am really looking forward to it. I'm really happy to see all of you. Now that I am, um, my moment of contrast has passed with this illness, uh, I'll be a little more active this week and responding to everyone. And uh, if I haven't responded to you yet, I'm going to do that uh, just very shortly. Uh, so. Have a great night, everyone, and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.